the Lord is mad. So we need to have a conversation now. Um, you have seen the headline. Nelson Chamisa stepped down from Triple C, but hey, yo, he isn't he's done with prison. <laughs> so, yo, yeah, come through. Oh, we need to explore this um, you know, conversation. By the way, Promise Mkwanaz had an incredible interview with Citizen Network, which I want you guys to come through and we can analyze it together. Quite, quite interesting what's happening with everyone. Please, before we, we proceed, if it's your first time to come across this channel, I'm going to say shout out and make sure that you, you uh, subscribe and ring the bell so that every time we are live, you'll be notified immediately. But don't forget to also like the live so that we push algorithm. Other people need to join us where we converse. All right, to my regulars, I want to say shout out. Okay, stick around. Yeah, we're going to, it's a long way, walk to freedom. <laughs> Vincent, it's good to see you. Welcome to Rumi and Sinside. I'm so excited this evening and happy weekend. Um, okay, I don't know what you're drinking. Fortune, good to see you. Ambassador of Peace, good to see you, man. Everybody calm through. <laughs> All right, so President Emerson Rangagwa, he said, yo, you remember a few days ago, he literally, uh, you know, came up and said, we have to uh, declare a state of disaster to the drought that was caused by El Nino um, and also, you know, appeal to citizens um, and also other um, donors to maybe contribute seven. So that was about two billion US dollars so that we can be able to feed our people. But he came today and say, yeah, I want to make it clear that we're good. We are very good as far as the issue of um, of um, of drought is concerned. We have make sure that we secure food for our people. Take a listen, please. As I stated in my recent declaration Good to see of everybody. a national state of disaster, due to the drought last week, our Zambia government will not let anyone starve. I'm so glad to hear that. Our government is well capable of handling this situation. Zambia successfully prosecuted a protracted 16-year armed liberation struggle. We reclaimed our land and are making it productive against all odds. Together in unity, our nation mitigated the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We will surely manage a drought year. As I stated in my recent declaration of a national state of... So the president said we are good. We will be able to feed our people. And that's great news, yo. I'm super excited. But actually, the other good news is that we are originally come from Mashingo. We never had no problem. We, our people have it said so well, which means we can also be able to help those that may be in need. So... I'm grateful that the president, um, you know, confirmed that we will be able to sponsor food uh, to every Zimbabwean. So, by the way, it's on record. So, <laughs> should there be any problem, you must always make sure that you at least you conduct the member of parliament and make sure that they know. Put it in writing. Put it up in writing social media and writing from your home so that at least everyone is, um, you know, is fed. Right. There's a comment that was dropped this afternoon that really touched my soul. And I want to share with you, this guy is called Consent Nyaku Irwa. So, in other words, is if you just comment, because we said we need to comment peacefully and lovingly. We may be reading your comment here. Very important. So, he said, I have personally come to realize that majority of the people saying BT and friends are sellouts was just a ZANU-PF strategy to put proxies on social media so that they can cause division within the main opposition and let me just say this that's actually a fact <laughs> that is a fact do you remember i've told you yesterday that uh, chris muchangwa came up gun blazing and said we are going to protect you know um tendai bt washing went sangezo from shamisa and they knew they'd unleashed war i mean when i say war i mean there are so many guys online here that are just waiting for you to drop a comment and what they do is they gaslight and you begin to fight among yourselves. Now we are wise. Some of them pretend like they're opposition and they're not. And we are much aware of those people. Yeah, they, they masquerade as, uh, you know, the supporters of Nelson Chamisa. And when they comment, 
which actually is said to worship. Why I say so? Because imagine ruining your own destiny. Brothers and sisters, my brothers, the blessed people of God, stop destroying yourselves. Murku protect them and walk to the now. Yeah, we are being used to ruin your own lives. These people are very close to go to heaven. They are literally winding down, signing out. You know, you can see mm -hmm, they've lived. They've done so much and we are grateful. But I'm saying stop destroying your own lives. Try to please politicians that can never feed your children. You have a generation to protect. You have a legacy, a strong legacy to live in this world. So be wise, be sober and be vigilant. Don't be used to do any person's dirty work. They should send their own kids while their kids are busy, you know, milking all resources, you know, taking almost everything. And you are busy typing on social media, destroying your destiny. No, we can do better, man. Wake up. Wake up, brothers and sisters. Quite interesting headlines that are definitely trending today. Two headlines. The first headline, you also remember that when Triple C, uh, you know, legitimate um, MPs were recalled. Um, you know, there was um, this faction that was so, you know, you know, claiming that they are for singers of Shamagu. Just like a group, a group of boys who were desperate, I think, for funds. But what they could have done was simply to go to look for work. <laughs> But they wanted to cut corners. The group of those guys, they now masquerading as the original or the authentic citizen coalition for change. And they were claiming that they were working with Manatenebit, which was definitely a lie. You had Tenebit confirming yes and that I don't even know who these people are. But um, now there was a headline that came out when they were said Triple C pulls out of by elections. And everyone was like, but why? Because you came up saying that you wanted to run, you know, against, you know, Zan PF. You were busy blaming Chamisa that he wasn't like the right leader. He was a dictator. And now all of a sudden you are pulling out. You have seen that he, Zan PF literally won most of these seats uncontested because of this group of guys. It's a few handful of men who are definitely, I call those men the most foolish men I've never seen, <laughs> you know, like in 2024. The most foolish man I've never seen is that group of men that went on and destroying the, our movement, you know, that people really worked hard to build, right? And then there is another also very interesting headline that came out today. That, and then the same guys are saying, let us postpone 2028 elections. Hello? Don't forget there is a mandra on the floor where people are singing 2030 negative chipo. 2030 negative chipo. Do you remember Wajga Jena? You remember Wajga Jena, that young man? One day he was sitting in the parliament talking to people like he's a god. He's a small young man. I'm sure he's very much younger than me. He was talking to old people in parliament like kids. He said, 2030, I'll be here. You can't stop me. There's nothing you're going to do. Hello, Wajga Jena, where the hell are you? Where is he? So, 2028 now, they are this group of Sangezo's faction. You also have seen Sangezo, you know, um, receiving such kind of, um, you know, um, um, say, royalty treatment. He's attending most of some PF's meetings. You know, you know, they're rolling a red carpet for him. He's greeting dignitaries. You have seen him he's greeting President Master Manangago. He's walking around holding a, a stick and he's claiming that he's actually Father Zimbabwe. And Father Zimbabwe, you know, he's masquerading as Josh Wangomo. An incredible man that is being used his name is being dragged into mud by uh, the so-called um you know quote unquote you know uh, uh, uh secretary general who actually record most of uh, of, uh, of triple c mps so interesting headline the first one triple c is pulling out they no longer want to contest now here we are we are now here is the mandras are circulating you know the president confirmed, I'm not in seeking of a third term. You know, remember that by 2030, Mandra is going, Tengeti Chiripo. Allegations are, these people that uh, found themselves in parliament illegitimately, but though they were st their, their, their forms were stemmed by the powerful people, they, the allegations are, they are the, the terms are going to be extended together, maybe up to 2030. So the deals, you know, stick the way they are. Not only that, I'm, I'm very sure that um, they've received really, I mean, I mean, very, very, um, you know, I, I would say fate 
you know, brown envelopes. You've seen the cars that they drive. I actually saw a car, people alleging that this car is being driven by Sangeso Shavango. It's, um, it's, I think it's, it looks like a Fortuna, but it's not really a Fortuna, but it's a big car. That Sangeso is not driving. You can see him, the arrogance and the pride. Also, Sangeso has got a son who is actually at university um, of, of Cape Town, which I say, brother, you don't really work. You're always back and, back and forth who is paying the fees. What's the kind of people that we have in 2024, right? The kind of men that we have in our society in 2024 who believe in getting stuff that they never work for, you know? And they just started walking around and acting like they've got it all together. They're being caught in being in our society. You've seen some of them are getting messages, Benz, their parents are crying, right? That's the society that we are building. That thing that they can build a legacy by simply getting without working. The worst part, these are actually men. And the last time I checked, men should work. They should work. So Nelson Chamisa, he said, from the bread of adversity to the bread of increase, the tau of, sorry, two breads, we are going through a rough path, uh, but it's the pathway to a blessed, prosperous, and glorious future. All this current nonsense shall disappear. Common sense shall be common everywhere. All this begging shall go away. We shall be a leading uh, and also lending nation. Plenty is our portion. Zimbabwe shall be fruitful again. Revival is coming. Isaiah 30, 20. Receive the Sabbath blessings, blessings sorry, and God is still in it. He is fully in control. I think people should just know that the battle we are fighting is more spiritual than it is a physical battle. I think I've told you before that this, that's why the spiritual has to go in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Generation that we saw before, they would come in with adamant and very solid, you know, confronting this kind of evil that we are seeing today. And they succeeded. They were resolute, you know, um, you know leaning on God that they knew would be able to take them through. We've seen it. This is not the only generation. It's not... As a matter of fact, the Bible is being like displayed in Zimbabwe. In this generation, we have heard and read a lot of stories where we saw that you know individuals came across, I mean, came against rulers that were ruthless. But for us, we are literally living and experiencing it. What a blessed generation we are, and we will come out victorious. Um, when we have monuments written, you know, we will remind our children that this is the battles that we fought. And we're always going to tell them, no, hold on. When you're face to face with any, any battle, always remember that we have God who is living. We have got God who will take you through and you will fight with you. You give you wisdom and counsel while you move forward. So we're going to be listening to Mr. Promise Mukwana is confirming that as much as Chamisa walked away from, um, you know, Triple C, he's still fully um, alive until, he, you know, until we cross. This is promising Mukwana and see. We had an interview with News, um, uh, Citizen Network, actually. So let's listen to Mr. Mukwana and see right now. Let me just say this, guys. You need to forgive me. It's not me. It's actually the interview itself. The video quality is not that great, but we did our best to make sure that we could give it a bit of flavor because we wanted you guys at least to be able to hear. I do not know why they did not give uh, him the mic. They would give the interviewer the mic, but he did not have it. So because of that, it was literally picking up all the noises that were in that place. So we did our best, making sure that at least we are able to listen. Um, you can be able to hear. So please take a listen. There will never be a time it wasn't the case. It's opposition or the civic society's purpose. Okay. This is where we go right now. Into civil society. Just let me know if we can hear properly. If I had wanted to be a CEO, I think I would have been a CEO as early days as in the days in the students' movement. As early days as in the days in, in the youth assembly of the MDC or in Tajamuka. Thank you. Yes. It will never be the case. There will never be a time in my life and put this on record. Okay. That I will be in any way the part and parcel of Zambia. 
Okay. So there you have it. In case you had further questions of um, where Promise stands when it comes to the allegations of him being a state agent or slash CIO, he said that if ever it was to happen, then maybe you'd have done it during your student days. And given his experience um, being off the Ndebele tribe, he says... He's always known that Zanu PF was the enemy. So being a state agent is never is not on his agenda and will never be on his conscience. <laughs> Is His conscience is clean. is clean. So if anyone has the receipts and you're watching this interview, which go against what Promise has just said um, with regards to the allegations of him being a state agent, please feel free to DM us, produce the receipts, please. We need the receipts of the V11 to crush his uh, response if the if we are to maintain the allegation that Promise um, is a state agent. Moving right along. Analysts have said that we have an opposition crisis, mm -hmm. and this is after the resignation of former Triple C President Nelson Chamisa. And it is being said that now Triple C is a dead entity. So maybe you could highlight and tell our viewers what exactly is going on with the Citizens Coalition for Change. Okay. Um, I want to start by saying that. Uh, there was no crisis in Triple C. There were no challenges. Of course, obviously, there would be challenges in any organization. I was about to say, are you sure there were no challenges? There were no significant challenges as to cause significant problems within the party. Problems only began when Zanu people, who are the authors and sponsors of impositors and imposters, like St. Jesus Chow, you know, came in and they, they bring this guy from Norway, they allow him or they assist him to cause the harmful party cost in the, in the main opposition party in this matter. They're calling our MPs, they're calling our councillors against the position of the party. As far as we are concerned, there is another interview that they will say. As far as we are concerned, Triple C has never called him. And all these people that were unlawfully called have never ceased to be members of, the, of our party. And today, if we were to be given the opportunity, we would still restore them in their correct positions. Because that's the position of our party. So that's where the problem starts. And um, we then get people, Hi, some you. people within the opposition, uh, getting bought into the I chabam idea or using the chabam to settle their personal scores with President Chamisa or with other leaders in the party. Uh, and that created a lot of problems. Okay. So in the end, it was Chabam uh, advancing the agenda of Zanpil to attain a two thirds majority in parliament. And therefore, okay. uh, presumably, to, to to remove a two thirds a two term limit and allow Mr. Nangagwa to have a third term or alternatively to extend his term uh, his his term from twenty twenty three to twenty thirty instead of twenty twenty eight. So this is a clear agenda of Zambia to ensure that the this the numbers they need in Parliament to pursue the school that I've just described. Why am I telling you all this information? I want you and your viewers to understand that the problems that the Triple C faced were a result of the sponsorship and authorship of Zambia. They were not internal problems. Much as the party is only internal problems, like any other organization, they were still contained within the party. And they were systems and avenues and platforms to get to you know, resolve all those issues internally. And the party, by the way, was on its way to its inaugural uh, historical convention, where we're now going to regularize our leadership and allow the people to, 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 to elect, so to speak, or to input into the leaders that they wanted to occupy certain positions. That was the plan. And that was the plan of the party. Until uh, we were tapered by uh, the regime. Uh, uh, 
were represented by Senator Chaba in the islands. Now, when all that was done, uh, it then led to the resignation of President and Chavez. And many have questioned the rationality of his resignation. resignation. Uh -huh. But what I can explain to you is that it was possibly one of the most strategic decisions ever taken. And I can see that you have a bit of shock. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I guess I need to work on my poker face. Yeah. So, um, you see, when you have that light as a target, yes. everybody's going to point their thumb at that light. At the light. But when you remove that light, where are they going to point their thumb? either among themselves or they're just going to give up because they have no targets. So that's why you saw the infuriation when President Chavisa stepped aside. Okay. He stepped aside for strategic reasons, I told you. And he clearly stated in his letters, I have stepped, I have resigned from C, but I have not resigned from politics. I have not abandoned you. I think that was a clear message. And it's a message that we want to continue to remind of the people of Zimbabwe. The President Chalmisa resigned from the Tripoli, not from politics. And he has not abandoned you. Hmm. But maybe from, this is hypothetical, yeah. maybe coming from the supporters, the people who are rallying behind Triple C, maybe they are yet to understand the, the game plan yeah. since the resignation. Yes. Because they were following a leader with the political party. Yes. And the moment he then leaves, whilst they still had questions of what is the next step after the 2023 elections, maybe I'm thinking that is where the, maybe the, like you called it, infuriation from them, because now they're thinking, so what exactly, who exactly are we following now that he's left Triple C? Are we just following a leader without a party? Or does he have a party in the making? and has a different game plan. So I think people are they're in limbo, if I might say, for lack of a better for lack of better they're in limbo wondering. So okay, if you say God's in it, when is God going when is this God of yours who called you to this politics and to leaders going to hear our prayer and our our supplications that we're we're sending over to the men up high. Maybe that's where the inspiration and anger is coming from. If you, as a Christian or a believer, we say that God's appointed time is always the best time. And God works in very mysterious ways. To God, to you and me, one plus one is two. To God, it may not. So, the God aspect is very central, um, not just to Christians, even other people who have other religions at the end of the day. There's a general acknowledgement that there is a, There's a higher power, power yeah. a higher power, which is God. The people may differ on how to get to God or how to praise God or how to worship God, but there is a God. Um, and there is a general consensus, in particular in Zimbabwe, that one way or the other people recognize the presence of a higher power. And that is the God that we describe, the God of everyone. So, in my in my own understanding, limited understanding of of, of God, um, what I can tell you is that God's appointed time is always the best time, and the way God reaches His decisions or His look at what happened in Senegal, it's God in one way or the other. That's God's plan, and God he always has mysterious ways of fulfilling His plan. Coming back to the reality that we are in here in Zimbabwe, the truth is, I was still trying to explain to you. So, when President Chalisa strategically stepped aside, mm -hmm. we then had to sit down and say, How do we stabilize the truth? How do we uh, protect what it, what it has? You know, as you say, the people of Zimbabwe invested their own. In C. by voting for Triple C councillors, Triple C MPs, and Triple C presidential candidate, and we say we can't just abandon mm. this investment by the people of Zimbabwe. 
how then do we stabilize it? How do we preserve it? And how do we uh, prepare or evolve it towards, you know, contributing to the new dispensation within the opposition party? So that is the I was about to say the new dispensation, and you said of the opposition. Yes, within the opposition. <laughs> okay. So, 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 that, so do we then put together uh, some form of a tactical interim leadership? of the triple C, uh, which is we've got an administrative committee chaired by the uh, Senator Jensen Timber. Um, it's more or less like a curatorship of the triple C. Okay. Those who understand curatorship will understand the implications of my use of that word. Um, so that is ongoing. Um, it is its own processes. We have given our parliamentarians a parliamentary program. We have given our councillors a program for local authorities. Uh, and we continue to ensure that what the people of Zimbabwe voted for is not lost by preserving the liberated zones, so to speak, the spaces that were won by the opposition. On the other hand, uh, before I go to the next, Within the, the, that, that context, one of the things that many people miss is that the triple C is a political vehicle for electoral processes. Right? Yes. But it is not the entirety of the democratic movement. It is not the sum total of the democratic movement. The democratic movement is made up of many components, including civil society. Progressive civil society is part of the of, of the democratic movement. Progressive students union, trade unions, um, informal sector, and others. And the general, you know, people in, in their various pockets and facets. Mm. That makes up the democratic movement. So, in our view, to say that President Chamisa was leader of the Triple C was actually to limit his leadership we limit his leadership and the democratic movement transcends the C. It's beyond the triple C. So part of the strategic logic is that if the if, if the the democratic movement is much broader than the triple C and um, because this leader, the, the key leader within that broader movement has become the target because of the triple C. If you can step aside and provide leadership on a broader and more open space, you could actually have more impact and sp spread much larger. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm, it's, it's very confusing, but... Uh, no, it's not confusing, I'm, I just have... But it's okay, go on. But as events unfold in the not-so-distant future, you are then going to understand. It will make sense. Okay. So, we are preserving what we want, what the people of Zimbabwe invested in within the triple C. But we are also rebuilding and reinventing and reworking the bigger space. Okay. When, when the time comes, they will, you will then have to say, how do we manage everything together into the Okay, and to the new opposition regime. <laughs> because when you then just say new regime, then we'll get confused where, where promise is loyalty, where, where your loyalty lies. Yes, seem like an exactly, now, exactly, because now we'll take that clip from social, on, so, and we'll now post it on yes, social media, right. and these are the receipts that we'll be giving you. And, um, okay, you... All right, so you've heard Promise Mukwana is confirming that what what's going on currently is that you know, uh, Chinyosu Chamisa just simply stepped down from Triple C, but uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, he's still fully, fully, like, fully available, you know, in politics. Just, it's a strategy. Again, you know, what actually, um, what, what I don't really get is that, remember, Chinyosu Chamisa resigned. You saw Weaver was released from prison, right? And, um, and then you started seeing also Sengezo Shangu making moves. 
And I asked you have a lot of questions today. Said, what what really happened? And Nelson Chamsa came to social media and was saying they want to they want to take my life. Do you remember that? They want to kill me. <laughs> You know, I've never seen such a country that is spending 24-7 just fighting for nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> what are people fighting for? Nothing. <laughs> Who want to be a leader in a country that is so chaotic like that? Nothing. I'm saying people are fighting for nothing. Literally. Except collecting things. They're just collecting, um, you know, minerals and... <laughs> <laughs> buying houses and uh, stashing some of the money in foreign lands. And that's all they're living for. What is it that people are doing? I've been saying, members of parliament, what are you all doing when the country is depleting daily? What, are, what is your job? What are you doing? But you had Mr. Conanzi confirming that um, it's just a strategy. So he said you will see very soon a lot of things are going to unravel. That's why I'm saying interesting days ahead. We're waiting to see what's going to be happening. That's why I, I've told you last time that you heard also today it is saying, I'm not going anywhere, I'm just going, but I'm coming back before 2028. This whole 10 mantra, the extension mantra, which is the 23rd mantra, is a joke. You, you, you know, you've heard how many people bastardize that idea and said to prison, not again. Not again. And I'm also a firm believer that, like I said to you yesterday, talking to the president, I was like, you know what? If I remember the time of Mugabe, people shift in a twinkle of an eye. Those that were used to support him, turn around and said, no, we were not part of him. And they moved with President Masul Mnangagwa. That's what they would do. They will use you, and then you're the one that will be left with no legacy, no name. And they move to the, whoever is going to be there. That's how our people have become. They've become such a very dishonest society. Because I've been saying our problem really, even if we may have a new leader, we may happen to be still having problems because our challenges are, are deeply rooted in, um, in a culture that we created over the years. A culture of greedy selfishness. You know, it's me alone. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about? And you know, I mean, in families as well, people fight that so and so is now doing better. Because someone thought they were, they should be the only person being seen and being glorified. There's this a god, a god kind of culture that we want to you know, to 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 adopt. I must be the only person who should be known for being this great man or that great woman. You know, people are getting so excited about getting out in that entourage. You know, the the, the entire, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Get out of that kind. People must salute you. And, and you ask yourself a question. And then what? You can be saluted. Then what? Life is about impact. Are you changing lives? What are you doing to the people? Because a title is not equal to impact. As a matter of fact, people like Mandela. Mandela didn't, was, wasn't even a leader for a long time. But you know, even kids that are, that are born today can still say Tata. But they never saw him. They still say Tata. Mandela's clothes were being sold on auction. I was shocked. How many US dollars were sold? His ID was on auction. Oh no, they eventually stopped it anyway. But they were almost being sold on auction. And I have to ask a question. Show me any Zimbabwean where there are things ever gone on auction that people want to buy a leader. Maybe it's time for us to actually look at each other and say, we need to introspect. Something is so wrong, interested in our blood. We are a society that is so broken, that is completely misinformed about life, that is operating anti-clockwise. Everything that is pertains to principles that govern life, we're doing the opposite. In a culture where people should work, we believe in giving them bits and pieces, some trinkets. In a culture where people should build, no, we are demolishing. In a culture where people should feed their people, no, we are taking it to foreigners, <laughs> you know? In a culture where we should love each other, no, we are operating, we have to hatred towards one another. Even if we can have a new leader, if we do not change our behavior, nothing will still change. We need to start looking at each other and say, hey guys, we need to fix our culture. We need to fix our culture. Look how marriages are breaking daily. We've been a culture that was so much known for respecting marriages. It's different. The stories you see on social media, unheard of. 
You know why? Because we allowed the enemy to have his, his headquarters in our nation. He's sitting, the devil is sitting and he's having a party. He's doing as he pleases. People who get celebrated are literally thieves. We have no track record. Real business people with track records have to be bastardized and be chased out. You can see people openly claim that Mbava for ED. And no, nothing happens to them. So we are operating anti-clockwise. It is really sad. It is very, very, very sad. Many young people, you know, they can turn the entire parliament around. And you start asking Chinese people who built the parliament, what was that for? You build the parliament, people voted in, and what happens? They're going to be removed again. You ask, what was that for? <laughs> Everything is anti-clockwise. I think people were talking yesterday about how Chinese have written off our debt in exchange of what? In exchange of what? It's sad. Honestly, like it's really, really sad. Now, Jaila says, sorry, my worry. Um, so now responding to these guys, who are masquerading as the triple C, who are claiming that no, there should not be elections in 2028. Everything is on PF script. First of all, we record people. You heard um Conan said it's on PF who record our people from parliament. I'm not surprised because it was built by their bodies. Right. Is their bodies. So the benefit of their bodies, they have to actually sabotage an entire Zimbabwe or betray their own brothers and sisters to please their bodies. I've seen all the meetings. I've always been seeing Chinese sitting at the forefront. And I'm asking myself, what are the business people in Zimbabwe to be sitting at the forefront? All, the, all these minerals that I'm hearing that they've been commissioned, I'm always seeing Chinese people at the forefront. I'm always seeing Chinese people at the forefront. I've never seen Zimbabwean real business people that we all know at the forefront. You also remember that um, Chanakira actually asked me some Chongwa last time and said, you are talking about all these billionaires that are coming in the country, all these billions that are being made uh, through our minerals. What about us? Why can't you also tell us what's going on? And he was like, no, you have no money. We have to work with billionaires from the outside. Outside. Does billionaires should be the one we have to receive a red carpet a treatment to do as a please? And now our brothers are selling the struggle too. Now you ask yourself questions. Do these people really think or they think with their feet? Do they think? They don't. So I said these charlatans have to contend with the import of corn court. 01.2013 is talking about the constitutional court that they want to stop elections in 2028 which means they're going to be contenting with what our constitution said that the election should be held every after five years so he said the maori the court, court judgment and various constitutional provisions like section 328 of the constitution because such a move will be tantamount to uh, sorry to smuggling the illegal third presidential term debate into our electoral politics. National consensus cannot be built through elite political skullduggery, but through national elections, which afford all citizens a chance to determine the government they want to steer our national agenda. We can't have partless, structureless, but evidently bought charlatans try to illegally stay in parliament through silly propositions like postponing elections, which in real terms is um, universal disenfranchisement of our people. Our democracy is anchored on universal suffrage, not universal disfranchisement. So this is jealousy. We actually say, I don't understand. Why do you want to stop elections in 2028? Why? Again, the 23rd mantra. Yeah. Remember, the, the third term it seems to be an issue. But the 2030, so if you if you can skip elections, what are you supposed to say? They're going to be done in 2030. Yo, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. No. Absolutely no. No. We cannot even afford that. We, we can't even afford a work. You talk about years. 
We can't afford a week. What are the reasons? What for? Doing what? A question that everybody has been asking. You are allowed to be doing what? They protect people that are busy looting. Of course. I do remember a story that was circulating of a Chinese woman that was caught doing some illegal business in Mulawayo. And she said, no, not, no one is going to do anything to me because she's protected by some top politicians. She would, speak, she would say anything that she wants to say. Again, when I was following the story, it just died. The story died. All right, so let's look at the analysis from David. He said such shenanigans perhaps explain why some comrades are determined to cling to Triple C and then destroy it before moving on, leaving it under the criminal custodianship of a rivalist. Opportunists and pretenders will achieve legitimatized, crimi um, legitimatized criminal agendas in the name of people. So he's also referring to people who are pretending to be in parliament when they can see that there's absolutely nothing going on. And you also heard this week that the members of parliament once skissed $1,000 on top of the range cars. And by the way, most of these people have got cars, but they want top of the range cars. You ask yourself to do what? No, they just want top of the range cars. But we can't, even, we, the president said we need to feed our people. We need one, we need two billion US dollars to actually be able to feed people. But at the same time, they want $60,000 a car. Can someone tell me how much that, does that, how much is that in, in dollars, please? In, sorry, in runs. I need to just see how much is that in runs because I can understand better. And the type of a car that they really want. I'm desperate to know because I, I don't know why I did not. I forgot to actually do the calculations earlier on, but I'm going to do it right away. I'm I'm desperate to know how much it is in runs. You know, if they want to kiss the thousand US dollars, <laughs> so do, that's the dollars in runs. How much is it in? Uh, it's almost 1.1 million. Uh, 1.1 million two nine point. Huh? No, it's kiss the thousand dollars in runs. Excuse me. Am I am I correct here? Is it 1,129,217.40? So that's 1 million. Uh, let's just say 1 million 230. So that's why they want to buy a car. So every member of parliament. And how many do we have? We have how many do we have? Uh, because someone was mentioning about 330 something, if I'm not mistaken, people that are in leadership. The member of parliament. We talk about senators. Also talk about ministers. So all in all, how much? It's going to also be all equal to almost 2 billion. They just want cars. So we're going to have to fork out $2 billion US dollars to buy people cars. And we have our, our family members who have no food to eat. Sorry, ma'ams and sirs, you need to really start introspecting. Did you come here for, to lead the people or you come here for your own personal agendas? <laughs> and we have no roads and you want top of the range car. A million rand car to drive where? Hot walls. Yeah, something is must, must something is I've told you we operate anti-clockwise. Yes. Everything that is right, we are doing the opposite. The last time I checked, other people say, no, 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 you know what? Please buy us like the cheapest cars. Or don't. Some of us we do have cars. Let's work with what we have. Or let's buy us the cheapest cars. No, they want top of the range. 1.130 million in runs, cars. That's what they want. Wow. Oh, wow. Because if I can look at the double caps, how much are they costing? I think Toyota uh, or Nissan, the, the, the double caps should be costing around 600,000 um, to 700,000 in runs. These ones want 1.130 million cars. What a shame. Don't forget that the same people who were given loans recently, hey, members of parliament were given $40,000 loans. The question is, how are they going to pay back? The ministers were given about 350,000 loans. The judges were given 400,000 US dollars. 
And also I heard that even the police chefs and also the, 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 the army chefs this way, simply speculation, they're also given money. So you, you, we should all just ask ourselves questions. What the hell are we doing, guys? All right, so under this theme, the case of Senghor Shavangu and the regime's 12-point plan thread attached, I opinionated that part of the plan was to elbow out Nelson Chamisa, create a triple C leadership without a base. Certainly the regime has, has, has done just, just that, you know, and this is David. He said such a baseless leadership within triple C would and naturally be reliant on both some PFC, better violence and uh, other means outside elections to survive. The attitude of this pretentious triple C leadership towards legitim le legitimizing its existence through elections betrays its baseless nature. This is the one for Sengesu Shavango. And surprisingly, this call for fog elections by this baseless imposter triple C comes at a time Lacoste is pushing a 2030, you heard the mantra, um, a supposed alternative, and the incumbent find themselves singing from the same um, hymn, it betrays the blasphemous um, convergence. Imagine um, that Mr. Mnangago, who find himself extending his disputed tenure on the basis of a call that came from the main opposition part, C, just as he successfully did during the unfolding of the coup. He will appear disinterested, uninvolved, and even opposed to the illegal call. But make no mistake about it, Zimbabwe needs a national dialogue to help birth a democratic um, breath through, sort of breath, breath through, but the, func the function of that dialogue should be to, uh, to initiate reform and allow for the folding of credible electoral processes that will usher in a legitimate leadership. Tragically, however, as was the case uh, after 2018, Edi would rather create a dialogue in his own image, ignore calls for a, for a genuine national endeavor. This so-called government of, uh, of national consensus by the um, leaders of the world can never be mistaken for representing popular sentiment. I end by asking somewhat a rhetor rhetorical question in the name of strate strategy in light of an appar apparent uh, uh, plan to use the triple C initiate Munangago's power, retention strategies. What must be done? Should the schemes be given an easy meal or is a fight worth waging and go As so I say, thank you. I, I, I just, you know, you know, you know what? Um, Can I say it's an issue of a fight? Or it's an issue of changing culture where people know they're worthy, right? When you know they're worthy. One thing I've told you before is the problem we are having in the country is not even politics. Unfortunately, politics have exposed underlying factors that we, don't, we need to deal with. Because if those underlying factors are not dealt with, we are bound to still have problems like what's going on in Zambia. But eventually they to put Lung in his place. Don't forget Lung was playing the same thing, the same dirty things against uh, Yuchilema. You know, we, we, we have a culture of people who are so greedy of power they don't know what to do with. You just want power to do what? Give me a position to do what? You can't even, you have no clue of what you're doing. What do you want to do with the position? So my point is we need to get to the bottom of our problems as Zimbabweans. We are a people who are just messed up mentally. Imagine sitting here and having men. This, these guys, are, some of them look like they are less than 40 or maybe, maybe early 40s. Who literally stand up, take broad envelopes, and they are being used to machinate and undermining the voices of elders. I'm talking about old people. They undermine our society, people who are hungry. It's as long as I can eat, I do not care. That is the problem right there. The problem is not the politicians. Or politics is just that politics is exposing the problems that we have in our society. We are a greedy and a selfish people, a wicked community, and an evil generation that will stop at nothing to destroy their neighbor. So, if that is not sorted, we're still going to be having problems. If you look at Sengozo Shamangu, he's, he's moving around like a psychopath. And he's laughing. What is so funny? What is funny? But he's busy laughing. I can't even.
can begin to fund them. Under normal circumstances, so I guess one's not going to see the light of day. I'm just telling you facts. I just or I can only imagine if he was in South Africa. The dude was not going to see the light of day. Again, to show you the kind of society that we have. Even his relatives or his wife. Sangas is a married man, right? His wife can't even sit down with this man and tell him, I'm telling you, okay, I'm single, but I know. But she, I've, okay, I've heard and I've, I've been taught. You want to get a man, you can deal with him. The wife can't even deal with him in their bedroom to question this man. <laughs> Holy Spirit, you know, to question this man and say, hey, brother. But again, show you the kind of society that we have. Women can eat money that they know has been looted. You know, they will take that money and go shopping and be showing off on social media. They are Louis Vuitton bags from money that was looted from the poor. Don't forget the court call money. Right, don't forget it. That's a society that we built. People no longer have no fear. It's a poverty mentality that have ruined Zimbabwe. Poverty mentality is a problem. Is we driver Yes, yes, yes. What a shame. What a shame. <laughs> it's a shame. Poverty mentality is a problem. It's a problem. Ukona na chini yura pa social media kuti tuku gazira road. It's a shame. In 2024, it's a shame. Kuti gazira road. Ha? It's us, the society that is broken. More than anything else, we are broken people, and we are in denial. Zimbabwe is a broken nation, and we are in denial because we are broken. People keep taking money, keep demanding stuff, but the country is depleting. They don't care. They don't care. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> some people are even younger. Some of them are less than, maybe in their early 30s, these girls, some are, I think, late 20s, early 30s, who are, in the, who are members of parliament, who are they in parliament, if I'm not mistaken. And they wanted one, they wanted 1.1 million car. They can't even buy for themselves. Even in their generation, their father's house, no one ever owned that car at that age. But they think the government or the people, a poor people should sponsor that lifestyle. I'm sorry, y'all, but it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Their own father never even buy a bicycle, but they want 1.130 million dollars. Uh, sorry, runs a car. I'm talking about 200 rands, let's say 200,000 rand. Fair play, you can have that one. A startup, that's going to just show you something is not making sense. You are young, start somewhere. Why are you growing? No, they want, now you can see why people would kill for positions. Yeah, some people are killed. And you can see these dunderheads are moving themselves into the uh, parliament. They can't even read or write. <laughs> that's. Okay, yeah, they can't even read or write. It's a fact. Can't read or write. It's true. Something's wrong. I also heard that last year, last year when the judges were given money, according to, that was actually Trevor Ngume, when he was having a meeting with, an uh, interview with uh, Adskame Berry, that, you know, houses, um, uh, the values of houses went up. When the judges were given money because they were all looking for houses which means judges were not even affording to buy houses they only have afford to buy houses when they were given the money cash the last time i checked i'm just looking at the south african context judges are really successful people they are known they, they don't live with this no 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 they don't they live real real lives they are i mean they're like gods <laughs> because <laughs> You know, I know I've, um, I've, I've had some of my clients' judges and they'll be renting houses for their kids. I see their pay slips. Real good money, you know, when they rent houses for their kids. But this was couldn't even afford to pay house. I'm just telling you, like, real facts to say something is wrong in our society. 
Because if a member of parliament in early 30s, you think your face car, or if it's maybe your car should be 1.1 million, something's wrong. Can we give you at least 300,000? Okay, fair play. What angry I papa did? Well, she drive so she drive or change. To try me my to fix some roads, at least you can be able to drive. Parodi kufamba. It's a fact. These are simple principles. If we want to shift our country in the right direction, we're going to have to sit down and really have a conversation in Zimbabwe because something must be wrong. Something is very wrong. It's the society that is broken more than we can talk about politics. Unfortunately, politics is simply exposing our broken society and our broken people. Because if we were good people, there's no way we would have such kind of elections that we're having all the time. And people can wear a suit and get in and read things that they know they're all fragilely done. But they will do it with such an... Um, you, you, you can't begin to fund them. Something's wrong with us. It's a broken society. And that has to be sorted. Because if it, does, if it doesn't, if we don't take steps to sort it out, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we are going to be having problems in the next 10, 20 years. I do this generation is dead because we are not willing to change our ways so that we can fix it for everybody by simply following simple principles. Is the right things or nothing, right? The right things or nothing. You know, life is in phases, people in sizes. You can't just wake up in the morning and you think you can have all that you need. No, just because you just find yourself in parliament where you're doing absolutely nothing. I've watched most of these meetings of these guys. There's not, they're not talking about anything. They're just sitting there with suits and acting like they've got it all together. Nothing. They talk absolutely about nothing. And then they walk out of the place. No wonder why majority of them are refusing to always put their, all their meetings live. People have been saying, can we watch you live? No, they don't want. Because they know that they'll be bastardized. What the hell are y'all doing? Because they're doing nothing. It's sad, actually. Very sad. I just hope and I pray that um, very soon we'll be able to have a way out. Because some people are saying soon we'll have a way out. And I've heard some of saying, if this case, I'm not, I've always been seeing people tweeting, uh, that is actually Ali said uh, today, he said, unfortunately, elections will not resolve Zimbabwe's problem. Because one thing I'll tell you that I know, I'm not prepared to go through like what we went through last year. Honestly, you know what we went through last year? That drama that we went through last year? With all the hopes, right? You remember what happened? Yes. I'm just saying, I'm not prepared to go through that. But I've seen some people saying elections may not be able to resolve our issues. But I'm also a firm believer that the way you get in is the way you go out. I'm a firm believer of that. How you start will determine how you earn. If you try to, you know, to con people on your way to the front, okay, you're going to be conned out. It is what it is. If you think you can manipulate yourself, In my opinion, how you start will also determine how you end. It's a principle. It's not me. It's a principle of life. <laughs> it's a principle of life. Just sit down with women who think I can, I can be pregnant to marry this man. Ask them how it ended. <laughs> You know, just ask them how it ended. Okay. Mm, okay. Just ask them how it ended. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mapindra Magata, do I'm It's a principle. Okay. The principles that guide in life. All right. A very sad story that I said today that I'm going to close with. Um, I think you guys have seen it circulating online. Um, you know, where a guy was literally uh, killed through, um, you know, because, because when, when I talk about these relationships and I teach young people every time and I tell them that if you think you can manipulate yourself to destiny, no, you are simply lying. It, it doesn't work like that. You know, 
guys, listen, I don't believe in cohabitation. I don't know if you believe. I, I don't believe in cohabitation. The reason why I don't believe in cohabitation is because I, I, it doesn't work in our, in, our, in our African context, especially in Zimbabwean context. Because I remember when you were growing up, you know, you, 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 you can't, if you don't come back home, they'll tell you to go back where you came from, you know, because, because that was abnormal for you that you can just go somewhere and, and sleep. No, it's not our culture. Our culture won't allow that, especially as a woman. No, no, right? But a very sad story is circulating today on social media. I want to take a listen to the story, especially my brothers here. I want to take a listen. Please. Very sad story indeed. Very sad story. Um, heartbreaking story, honestly. Heartbreaking. Uh, very sad story. I think I'm going to narrate it. All right, I um, seems to be struggling to actually be able to start it, but I can narrate the story for you. So a guy apparently uh, was dating a woman. So the woman banned him, so he died. So the police are looking for her because she banned our brothers in Cape Town. Cape Town it seems to be having a lot of drama going on in Cape Town there. So you are dating with a person, you are dating a psychopath. Let me just say this, because you don't do your diligence search, right? You, you think... <laughs> You're meeting, you know, you're just vibing or we can just move in if you want to, you know. Okay, because we are far from our parents, right? Parents don't even know what we're doing with the kind of life we're living. Boom! You are having your issues in your, you know, in your relationship. And the, the woman decided to pour hot water on this man and burn him. Burned him and then he went to the hospital. He died because he really had serious injuries. And she's, um, she's nowhere to be found, the lady. And I'm talking to my brothers. You must do your research when you're dealing with women. Do your research. Because don't see women looking all polished on the streets and think that everything is, is like, oh my God. No. That's why it's important to check family life. Where are you coming from? Who is your father? And who is your mother? How are you raised? What has been happening in your family? Do your research. Stop just moving in with people's children like you, you are not okay in your head, right? People should not just have access in your house, in and out like they're crazy. Hey, guys, things are happening out there. Things are happening. Women are consulting because women are desperate for love. You know, scripturally, the Bible is very clear on that. I think the book of Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken, where the Bible says that um, there will come a time where seven women who cry to heaven send him for one man. <laughs> you know? That's how desperate can people become. Majority of women are consulting deeply because they want, they are in search of love. And remember when you're consulting, it's not everything that you get that is right. Majority of things that they are getting destroy women. Men, sorry, men. Men don't know it, but I'm going to tell you now. And you're hearing it from a 41-year-old woman, so I'm telling you what I know, facts. I talk to women all the time. You may think, oh, it's easy, I can get any woman I want. No, you're not just getting any woman what you want. You're selling your destiny to anybody on the street that will have nothing to do with your future. And before you know it, you get killed. Or you get burned. Imagine with all your handsomeness, you just wake up with all the bruises. <laughs> because you made a psychopath because you didn't do your research. You did not check out who is this person that I'm going to be with. Don't say we didn't warn you, we told you. We, we all talk, I talk about this all the time and say, yo, listen. And then I still believe that this cohabitation is not our culture thing. And I repeat it, notwithstanding that we are in foreign lands where parents can't watch us, can't see what we're doing. It's not in us. Yes, white people and Indians can do it because, I mean, it's kind of... Because I tell you, um, you know, I've been doing property things for, for most eight and a half years now. And one of the things that I did, a trademark really in the, in the English culture, was that, um, you know, when their kids are like 23, 25, 23, 25 years old, maybe early 20s or even late 20s, and they want to do this cohabitation, like move in a boyfriend and a girlfriend, you'll see the grandmother comes 
you know, I've seen West Indians, they'll come with the quantum, you know, the grandmother from the side, the grandfather, the mom, the daddy, both ways, and they come to see a one-bedroom apartment. You know what I'm saying? So they can check in their grandchildren who are moving in with a boyfriend. That's how serious they are. But a Zimbabwean child, girl, be a girl or lady, man, can just pick up a woman in Johannesburg or pick up a woman in Lesotho or in Botswana or in just say, let's move in. Huh? I have said this and I repeat, if you want to move in with me, okay, let's, let's get out of your parents and my parents. Talk to my daddy and your parents. Let's see what they say, if they approve that. And you know that they won't approve right because you know it's wrong, right? Sometimes it's a simple principles that are just going to shape your destiny. But some you may think, oh no, everyone is just doing it. But they're doing it because parents are approving it. Are your parents approving your behavior that you're doing in all these lanes that you guys are because you're far away from your families? Do they approve your behavior that you're doing today? No. But when you burn, you start to want us to come through and rescue you. But we are telling you that you must make sure that you order your steps. You know exactly what you're doing and you do research about the people that you're cohabitating with, that you bring in and out your house, women, all type of people. Let me just say this. The world is getting darker by day. Some people don't just come in. They will leave something. You just heard me. We are living in very dark times. Very dark times. There's a woman, I wish I would have brought a video, I could have played play it for you. She's a Sangoma. She's a well-known Sangoma. I, I'm actually going to interview her one day because I want you guys to actually know what, what's happening in the dark world and the spiritual world because majority of you are just, you're just blank. You get excited, but you don't really know how the world is functioning. And she said most of the times, I, I caught her, it was. You said you'll see very rich guys you know, with those expensive cars going to locations. And because location girls are damka, they don't go into these rich kids because they know the parents will question and say, hey, who's this guy? Because, I mean, you do not take my daughter. I need to know who you are. Who's your mom and who's your daddy? But they will go to locations because they know location girls are very desperate. You know why? Because most of their muti works that way. You have to go and use those girls to maintain the riches that you're acquiring in a dark world. You saw a video that was circulating, and people were laughing and things a lie, of a girl that I can't mention the name because I'm very respectful. And they said, this guy is using girls to maintain his riches. That's the world that we are living in today. It's a dark world. And here you are, a very polished young man. You met that girl. You think, oh, I finally got a girl that I can move in with me. You do your research, brother, because you're going to lose your destiny. It's the season that we are in. The world is getting darker and darker and darker by day. The easier you get access to anything, especially sex, the darker it becomes. You're not just getting free sex. You're selling your soul to the kingdom of the devil. That's where things are turning ugly. And it's time for you guys to know that the world is really getting bad. No woman is just going to pour water on you and burn you and kill you. No, some of them have consulted in wrong places and getting some stuff that is not good for them. And they thought, oh my God, I can keep this man. No, they didn't know. They were giving, giving things to actually go in and kill an innocent soul. Because again, to the allegiance of the darkest kingdom. I'm trying to help you so you understand. Nothing's for free, y'all. You're going to have to pay something. Nothing's for free, right? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nothing's for free. May you so rest in peace. But again, we keep on warning you, young people, stop selling your soul. Nothing's for free. Nothing's for free. You are paying something. Be wise and be sober and be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, is moving like a rolling lion, seeking for who he can devour. And his mission is clear to steal, to kill, and to destroy. 
May God bless you and may God bless Zimbabwe. I love you all and sleep tight. Some of you have a great one. And it tomorrow. Bye for now.